Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Um, Senate Bill 1803 outlines the process that the Office of Inspector General and a provider must allow during the investigation of an allegation of fraud or overpayment. It codifies the timelines for when a provider is notified and time frames for when a provider may attest or appeal charges. SB 1803 addresses details like interaction between the OIG and investigations from other law enforcement entities as the requirement that the process be clearly explained to the providers when they are notified of a payment hold, as well as posting this information online in the name of transparency and um, accountability. Members, this is the effort to give doctors, dentists, providers a due process if they are uh, accused of or if there is a allegation of fraud or overpayment. Um, this is something that's been worked on uh, throughout this um, current session. I want to thank Bobby Guerra and uh, Richard Raymond for their work and of course uh, Senator Huffman who put together a work group on this in March to address uh, the concerns. We do have a couple of amendments and I want to explain those as they come forward. The following amendment, clerk will read the amendment. Amendment by Colcourse. Chair recognizes Ms. Colcourse to explain the amendment. I can get it more Great. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. I want to explain this amendment. Um, when the bill came from the Senate, it put in uh, many new due processes for the providers. And it allowed a track that the provider can have an informal settlement conference. It allowed it to then go to the SOA hearing and then uh, also go uh, to a review by a trial judge. It puts in many new steps. When the bill was referred to human services, um, Chairman Raymond worked on uh, a substitute that would give it two tracks. You could go this way through SOA or you could go through the district courts. Um, we've had a lot of discussion today among members. And what we're going to do is with this amendment, we're going to take it back to how it came out of the Senate, uh, addressing some of the concerns by the members that we've had, and that's why we delayed the bill. Uh, and so it takes it back to the Senate, and uh, uh, with one exception that the Commission shall at no expense to the provider who requested the meeting provide for an informal resolution meeting held, uh, give them a recording of that informal hearing so that there, there is some, um, you know, not the he said, she said, and some recording of it. And so this amendment puts it back to how it came uh, back from the Senate except for that one piece. And then Representative Guerra is going to have an amendment to, uh, not to the amendment, but another amendment on something that we've agreed to. So um, this amendment is acceptable to me. Mrs. Coco sends up an amendment. It's acceptable to the author. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the amendment is adopted. I've got a question. Yes. Does the general lady yield for a question? I do. Can, can you General Lady yield? Um, Representative Coco, can you explicitly lay out the due process provisions that will remain yes. for the medical providers? Absolutely. Please. So, in working with uh, the providers in CMA, what came out of what came out of the Senate and, and what was looked at is there are several new steps. Okay, so number one, Representative, we put in timelines, and so one of the things that was concer a concern was is when you had a, a calf, uh, a credible allegation of fraud, and there was a payment hole put on. 
you know, it kind of spun out of control for some providers. Don't get me wrong. I don't. I don't want to say that the state ever um, acted inappropriately, but that there was a lot of mystery to when the next step would happen. So we put that in, and so um, we put in the the steps that you start uh, the new things and say there's two tracks here. One is in overpayment, and one of them is in um, in the um, credible allegation of fraud. Okay, so I could. I could walk you through both of them, but they're very similar. So uh, the medical director ensures, um, ensures a um, qualified expert reviewed any medical findings. That's brand new, okay? The provider receives notification of overpayment. So for the first time ever, we're going to have make sure that we have a qualified expert reviewing the medical findings. The provider receives notification of overpayment. Notice of um, extrapolation methodology calculation of overpayment. That's new. So, uh, uh, Representative uh, Colquist, can sure. I interrupt you there? Sure. And these, um, your amendment, you've been uh, talking with the stakeholders and working with Representative Guerra so that uh, not all the due process rights that the, the medical providers would have enjoyed have been stripped out. Is that correct? Oh, no. No, sir. No, sir. In fact, um, in dealing with uh, the folks from your area, and I know that JM came over to me when I delayed it, and he was very nervous. That's part of why, okay, Chairman Raymond kind of put in two tracks, and I'll cut to the chase here. There, there's the track that came out of, for the first time ever, we will have timelines, we will have notifications, a doctor will know exactly, or a dentist, what's going on, okay? That all remains in due process, going through so on, and when you don't like your finding it, so uh, right now you have to appeal it back to the agency. Right. How's that going to go? Not very well, probably. And so now we put this in process where you have an appeal process by someone that is not the agency. And so let me tell you what 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 um, Chairman Raymond was worried about was well, you know, he at first started with a trial de novo. And um, then he said, well, we'll go on two tracks, okay? You can either go the SOA route or you can go district trial route, okay? And he did put that in the substitute, and that was what was voted out of the committee. And, you know, being respectful to the process, you know, I, I, I was going to come to the floor today and do that. We had a lot of concerns, uh, a lot of groups against this new process. And I will say that you can't throw the baby out with the bathwater, okay? in that we want to make sure for the first time ever, and I would say that some of the medical associations have been working on this for years to get some kind of due process. So we are definitely moving the ball forward way beyond where we are today. Uh, this is how it came out of the Senate, and uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm pleased with it, and I would rather this bill not go down. And, and so and working with the members. And you're, you're satisfied or you're your amendment now satisfies the stakeholders and in particular I'm not talking about groups that are not part of the process like TMA and other groups but specifically with Texas Medical Association are they bought into your amendment? Absolutely and I met with even a provider from your area I believe yes, and he said yes we will take 1803 as it came out of the Senate so I want to ensure the body I had a number of members come to me and say I don't even think we need this bill in general and I'm going to tell you that for our providers, for our doctors, for our dentists, we need this bill so that they have certainty. If they have a credible allegation of fraud, if they are, you know, or if if the OIG comes back with an overpayment uh, potential, that there are steps and it's going to be posted online. There is no more guessing. There is a due process. You are not guilty. Uh, before proven innocent, you are innocent before proven guilty. And that is why I stand before you today with confidence that we are moving the ball in the right direction. Thank you, Resident. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. The following amendment, the clerk will read the amendment. Amendment by Guerra. Chair, recognize Mr. Guerra to explain the amendment. Thank you, members. Um, as um, Chair Colquist explained, this has been a long process. In fact, as 
the very first hearing I had on the due process issue in Chairman Raymond's committee was about six hours long. We heard a lot of testimony from a lot of physicians, uh, mainly orthodontists and dentists, who had been targeted by the OIG in what was felt like a very unfair manner. Um, yes, indeed, we want to stop fraud. That's a very, very important part of what our responsibility is, but at the same time, it's very, very important that we bring, that we go about it in the right way and, and not single um, health care providers out unfairly. And so what we've done is, uh, I, I had originally filed a bill for a due, a due process, which is a, a trial de novo for the lawyers. You know what a trial de novo is. That was going to be, if you didn't like the, um, the ultimate decision, you could take it before a, a district court in Travis County. But as Chair uh, Kofos explained, um, this has been a, a, a moving process, and the bill overall is much better than now than where it was, and um, so my amendment basically uh, provides that the House Public Health Committee and the House Human Services Committee and the Senate Health and Human Service Committee shall periodically request and review information from the Health and Human Services Commission, in other words, an oversight, but mainly of the activities of the Inspector General, the OIG. The House Public Health Committee and the House Human Services Committee will perform these duties jointly. It's not exactly what we wanted. In fact, it's a far cry from it. But there's so many other parts of this bill that will benefit our health care providers to make sure that um, everything is, that when an investigation is launched, that it's done with, with some due process. And so um, the, the author of, of the bill um, approves of this amendment. Mr. Guerrero sends up an amendment. It's acceptable to the author. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the amendment is adopted. Chair recognizes Ms. Colcourse on the bill. I want to thank everyone who has worked on this. I've had some questions about due process. Uh, and yes, um, there is an appeal beyond SOA. I think it gives the protections needed, but it does not have trial de novo in it, which was some of the concerns that we heard. And uh, I move passage. Thank you, members. The question occurs on the passage to engrossment of Senate Bill 1803. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it in Senate Bill 1803. It's passed to engrossment.